The Maple Leaf Forever by the RCMP Pipes and Drums Band. Canadians have always been a patriotic bunch. We just don't have a reputation for flaunting it. That could be changing. Recent Ipsos Reid poll suggests that Canadians are becoming more showy in their pride. One in five survey respondents declaring that they'd even be willing to get a Maple Leaf tattoo. But the right to bear flags hasn't been as simple as going to your local tattoo parlor. Many proud flag-waving Canadians living in condos and apartment buildings have been told to take the red and white down for not being aesthetically pleasing. Condo boards even fining people for not taking their flags down. Well, Toronto MP John Carmichael has made it his mission to change all that with Bill C-288 to preserve an individual's right to fly the Canadian flag. And it's just a royal ascent away from being unfurled as a new Canadian law. I caught up with John Carmichael to discuss the initiative and the reasons for it. Well, Charles, I, uh, when I began this uh, process of a private member's bill, it was my assumption that every Canadian had the right to fly the flag. And what I soon found was that was not the case. And uh, I believed it was time that uh, Canadians had the right to fly the flag and that, in fact, we should encourage more Canadians to fly the flag than we see today. All right, it's embarrassing for, for many of us uh, watching tonight to believe uh, that it's a serious issue for many Canadians, but unfortunately, uh, you're not blowing smoke around. Uh, over the years, we've looked at this, and it is a serious issue. I wonder if you could just, just offer up a few examples for those people who maybe haven't been paying as much attention. Just give us some concrete examples of how Canadians have been stopped from exhibiting their patriotism. Well, uh, thank you. I appreciate that. Uh, the, uh, the couple that were the genesis of this are a couple who live in southwestern Ontario. Uh, they live in a, uh, a ratepayer controlled environment and he had served on the board. They lived in 40 years of housing where they'd always had a flag on their home. When they moved into this complex, they found out not only could they not fly their flag, they were fined and they, he was put in bad standing with the, uh, the ratepayers group uh, for flying the Canadian flag, something I found unbelievable. Another uh, a pair of veterans, two veterans in Ottawa, who both served in Korea, served in our armed forces, wanted to put a flag up uh, to support our troops overseas, whether in Afghanistan primarily or in peacekeeping uh, endeavors. And they were uh, fined and told that they would be uh, evicted from the rental uh, community that they lived in. Uh, another couple from Edmonton, a seniors couple, uh, just want to support the Canadian flag and uh, were fined $250 by their condo association. That to me is reprehensible. Mr. Carmichael, it might not be fair to try to read people's minds, but after a while there, there's a bit of a pattern. Uh, you've studied this more than anybody uh, who's uh, working with government right now. So what's motivating people to stop people from flying the Maple Leaf? Well, Charles, the, the, the primary problem is in environments that are controlled by either condo boards or rental boards or again ratepayer associations and where they want to maintain architectural integrity they want their buildings looking good and i guess the bottom line is if you let one person fly the flag then in theory everybody else is going to put a flag up and we've got a problem in that building uh, these are volunteers who i think are good-hearted really uh, want to do what's right for their uh, their community but at the end of the day, when, when, when Canadians are being restricted from flying the flag that serves as the symbol for freedom and democracy for this country, that's when uh, I think we've got a problem. And there is no opportunity for dialogue. These are usually uh, rules and regulations that are locked in uh, governance for that uh, association or for that environment. And uh, there's no opportunity for debate. What I've done with the bill is hopefully create an environment that will create an opportunity for discussion, open up reasonable uh, consideration to those who have reasons to fly the flag and are, are proud to fly the flag, and find a way to do it respectfully that won't in any way uh, you know, impact or create a negative impact for that building or that environment. Will the National Flag of Canada Act, uh, once it's passed, and I've got you know, fingers crossed, and I think most people watching have their fingers crossed that this will pass or your private member's bill will pass, and I encourage everyone to contact their members of parliament and the prime minister uh, to be supportive of this. But beyond that, will there be any guarantee when this act becomes law that Canadians will not be stopped from exhibiting their patriotism? 
Uh, unfortunately, at this point, Charles, no, that, that will not be the case. Uh, the, the act has passed. It passed the Senate a week ago. And uh, as of yesterday afternoon, 2 o'clock, uh, our Governor General uh, signed uh, royal assent to this bill. So it is, in fact, law now. And the law, as, as a part of our legislation, it encourages Canadians to fly the flag. There are no penalties. So that if somebody restricts somebody from flying the flag, there is no uh, recrimination, no repercussion, no penalty to that individual. So we still have a problem. Uh, what I'm hoping through the, uh, through the advent of this bill is that we will now have an opportunity, because it's law, uh, to create dialogue. And let's face it, when two adults get together and discuss something, the hope is that they're going to arrive at a reasonable solution. Mr. Carmichael, uh, since you have been uh, talking about this for a long time now, and you finally have a royal assent, were you not hoping for a law that had more teeth? I know you want the discussion, and it's healthy to have a discussion. That's what we're all about here. We like to have national discussions. But how about a little bit of uh, impact? How about a little bit of enforcement? Well, when, when we first, uh, when we first uh, developed the bill, there was enforcement uh, in that bill. And as a private member's bill, it was important to me, number one, create an environment where we could, we could have something that people will begin to talk about. Uh, the enforcement was pretty severe. And clearly with uh, my opposition colleagues, uh, my own party, uh, in some cases, the enforcement was too stringent. And so uh, we agreed that the only way that this bill would achieve any success was to pull those, those uh, penalties out of the bill, remove the enforcement, and create the bill in such a way that it would become legislation. But uh, no, there won't be enforcement that is a big stick uh, that's going to hang over people's heads. My hope is that this will at least begin the process where people can relate to legislation that supports it. And clearly, uh, you asked earlier, our Prime Minister, Minister of Heritage, they all support the bill in a, in, in a significant way. And so my goal, my goal was to get this thing successful, see it completed, and uh, as of yesterday, that was the case. Well, uh, Mr. Carmichael, thanks very much for launching an important conversation about our flag. Thank, Thank you very you. much, sir. And Thank have you. a happy Canada Day. Happy Canada Day, Charles, and to all Canadians.